Tonight I'm going to be trying my hand at resin. Um, I created some art with my um, son and my niece at the weekend on these small canvases, 7x5 inches. So small canvases but perfect to try resin. Um, I have tried resin before and I used uh, an Amazon product which is craft resin. Um, I didn't quite get the result I was looking for. The top looked great, but the edges, it thinned, and you could see the, um, the layer of the canvas, the bumpiness of the canvas, the texture of it. So it was great on the top, but the sides were not messy, but just didn't have the finish I was looking for. So this time I've purchased Mastercraft resin, um, which is a one-to-one -one combination. Um, and I was just gonna see what sort of finish I get with the Mastercraft. I've seen uh, Rinska Downer use it on YouTube. Um, she does a really good job. So I wanted to test this on the smaller canvases to see if this holds up better around the edges and on the sides. And if it does work out well, I'm probably going to use it to pour on one of my larger um, pieces of art that I was, I was really happy with. So. If this works out, I'll, I'll use the resin on a, on a bigger piece. Um, this, like I say, it's a one-to-one -one mix. Um, on these tiny canvases, it's a combined mix of one ounce for each piece of art. So I'm gonna do one ounce of the resin and one ounce of the hardener. Um, mix them together. You have to stir it for three to four minutes. So I'm gonna stir it for four minutes. And then what I'll do is I'll come back to you once it's all mixed up, back into one cup, and I'm ready to pour on. And I've got my gloves ready to go. Um, other, actually, on that, I did see a fantastic video the other day. I can't remember where it was, so unfortunately I can't give them any acknowledgement. But what I'm going to do is wear one glove on my left hand, which is, and two gloves on my right hand, which is my dominant hand. So two gloves on the, my dominant hand, and I'll show you why. Um, when we get into the video. So gloves, resin, art, torch for the bubbles, which is really important because you have to keep coming back and torching it every, for every, every few minutes after you've poured. Um, and then also, I've also got a covering to put over the art once the resin's complete. So like I say, I'll come back to you once all the resin's mixed up. Okay, I've been mixing this resin for about three minutes-ish now. It's absolutely chock-a-block full of bubbles slightly over two ounces I think because of the amount of air that I put into it I'm hoping that this amount of resin will do these two canvases um, well let's see um, what I'm going to do is pour around the edge just to make sure I can push the resin off onto the edges and cover cover the sides and then I'll pour some in the middle get both done leave a bit in the pot so if I need to top up anywhere I've still got a bit of resin left uh, okay so here we go Loads, loads of bubbles, lots and lots of bubbles. Right, I'm going to do the edges on both first. I'm going to do the middle. And then I'm going to come back, do the middle on my other one. Getting really low on resin. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there so I've got just a little bit in the pot if I really, really need it, which isn't much at all. Now, I'm gonna use my right hand and this is where the two glove trick came in. So I'm gonna use my right hand to, to, to move the resin around and get the canvas covered. And then what I can do is take off the first glove um, which is covered in, then going to be covered in resin and I've still got my other glove to handle the art so that's where the two glove trick came in, I thought it was brilliant. Um, right, so I'm just, I'm going to just manoeuvre the resin towards the edge. It's good, it's nice and thick um, so that's I think a really good sign for coverage on the edges and the corners or where the canvas kind of 
moves off the edge or over onto the sides. So now I'll get rid of this top glove. Still got a glove on, um, but I've got now got a clean glove to at least touch my blowtorch. And then we use this to pop the bubbles. So rather than burn the resin, I'm gonna sort of come back and forth between the two, the two paintings. See where big bubbles pop, we might have to come back and just dab the resin there. Okay, make sure I get the edges. They got as much bubbles in as the rest of it. Newspapers feeling it a little bit. And we're really sort of getting close to that glass finish now. But more bubbles, no matter, no matter how much of this first pass we do, in about, I don't know, five, five or 10 minutes, micro bubbles would have come up to the top. So it's really worth coming back and hitting it again with the blowtorch. Once we've got a lot of the bubbles out, what we'll do make sure we get the edges, get the top. Yeah, there is lots lots of small small bubbles now that you won't be able to see on the camera. Right. So now that we've got the majority of the bubbles out. I um, I'm just going to check, make sure we've got the good good coverage over the top. It's over here, it's doing yeah, it's do. It, I think it's going to do what what the craft resin from Amazon did, which is which is not provide enough coverage where the canvas tips over the corner of the frame. And runs down the side and rather than going from this really glassy top you go to the texture of the canvas if I can I try and zoom in on this it's doing it everywhere though and I don't know how I can fix that at the moment anyway maybe it's another layer so maybe we let this dry and cure and then sandpaper the top and then put another layer on. Or maybe what I can do is use that leftover resin and dump a load on the areas that are obviously coming up short. So it's all along here, this corner, this corner. And over here, I suppose I, there's nothing wrong with me using my hand again. Maybe I'll use my left so I can use my right to use the blowtorch. Let me put some more resin on first. I've got a few. 
few millimeters of resin left in the in the pot. Um, okay, so that might have been that might have solved our issue, possibly. There's still air coming up through. Which isn't a problem. We can manage the air. I just want to get the finish. Which I might have managed. Imagine it's going to make great YouTube. So obviously one piece of advice is to have it on a base where you can twist it and turn it to keep looking in through the lights. Trying to make sure we've got coverage on all of those edges. That's not looking too bad now. So I'm, I'm gonna have to obviously stop manipulating the resin at some point, but I just wanted to make sure I could make the most of that initial period where I could really push it around. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that where it is. Um, I'm, not gonna push the, I'm not gonna push the resin around anymore, but we are going to constantly torch it for, for air. So, I mean, you don't need to watch me to torch this on and off for the next 15 minutes. So what I'll do is, um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just gonna manage the air as it rises up through the resin. Then I'm gonna get um, a covering, put it over the top so no dust falls on the art. Um, it, I think it's, it's dry to the touch within seven hours, um, but fully cured, um, I think up to seven, five to seven days. So what I'll do is I'll come back to this and I'll show you what it looks like within five to seven hours. Cause obviously it'll be dry to the touch and we'll see how well it covered that transition from top to sides. Um, and see whether or not we manage to solve this issue of the of the resin just disappearing off the edges. I'm really I'm really happy at the moment. I keep checking because uh, I really hope if we can manage it in one hit of resin and not have to do a second coat, it's a massive money saver, and it's also it's less work because you have to sand the resin, then you have to reapply, you have to set everything up again. So yeah, okay. I'll manage these bubbles for the for the next 20 minutes um, 
and then I'll come back and show you the the result within within five to seven hours.